Hey folks, uh, welcome to our uh, webinar on the BBA in Innovation and Sustainability here at Royal Roads University. Um, in a few seconds, I'm going to share my screen so that uh, we can take a look at a PowerPoint that's here. But I just wanted to say uh, welcome. My name is Lee Sentis. I'm at the moment the program head uh, for the BBA. But we're also joined here by uh, Katrina Wassman, who is the program manager. And uh, Angelina Leduc and Emily Mulrooney are both uh, program associates. And we also have a past student with us, uh, Mel LaSalle, who's going to talk a little bit about her experience in the BBA. So let me share my screen. And so hopefully you're all seeing uh, a beautiful campus at Royal Roads. Um, and before we even start, I really just want to um, acknowledge the fact that we are on space uh, that is traditionally unceded land of the Kasepsin and Lekwungen ancestors uh, and families. And it's with gratitude that we acknowledge the fact that learning has been happening within this place for many thousands of years. Uh, and we hope that we are continuing that uh, tradition along with those families. So. The big question that we're here to answer is why should I get a BBA from Royal Roads University? And we're going to handle a variety of topics over the next 30 minutes. So we'll have about maybe about 10 minutes or so uh, of me telling you about the program. Uh, then I'm going to pass over to Mel for uh, about 10 minutes or so, and then we'll we'll hold questions at the end. Um, so if you do have questions uh, through uh, this uh, process, um, you know, feel free to uh, just write those down and we'll handle them at the, at the end of the webinar. Uh, and we also have some questions that uh, we find commonly get asked and we'll, uh, we'll throw those in too. So we'll be covering what happens in a normal BBA program, how RRU's project-based learning is different. Uh, what it looks like in practice, we'll also look at some example projects and clients, and we'll compare what you get in a resume. So I'm going to use my resume coming out of my undergrad degree uh, and to uh, what you would get coming out of RRU's BBA program. Um, in the last bit, we'll talk about the support for your journey, so the other supports that are here at Royal Roads. I'm going to pass over to Mel, uh, and then we'll handle uh, any questions, including some of the questions that were regularly asked. So let's think about a normal BBA program. So oftentimes what's happening is you're enrolled in sometimes three to six courses per term. You go to a range of classes. Sometimes there's dozens, if not hundreds of students within that classroom. Um, and you're expected to quietly take notes. There's probably uh, an essay that you have to write or maybe two. Um, and then oftentimes at the end of it, you're expected to memorize all those notes um, and reproduce that accurately within some kind of an exam setting. And this is a regular pattern that happens from course to course and from term to term. Um, and the challenge here is that what this is really emphasizing and, um, and rewarding is your ability to memorize information. Uh, and you know, if you go and talk to modern day employers, that's not something that they really value. Uh, what they're valuing are more of those soft skills, your ability to communicate, your ability to problem solve, um, your ability to work in a team. Um, and uh, you're not getting that within a regular BBA program. Um, the other thing that employers really emphasize and, and, and put a lot of value on is your experience. Um, so the challenge, you know, you can come out of a regular BBA program, you've got a degree, that's great. But the, the RRU's program is different. Uh, and, you know, just from my own personal experience, there are some key questions that I had when I was going through my undergrad, such as, why does every term feel the same as the last? Why am I taking an accounting course and a marketing course at the same time? Like, how do these things even relate? Um, the, the, always the angst of, you know, does the, does the prof even know my name? Um, and the big one that I had, um, 
pretty much throughout my entire experience was, when do I actually get to do something? So within RRU's BVA, it emphasizes action. It's all about doing. There's no lectures, there's no exams, there's no traditional courses. You're not graded on whether you can regurgitate information and you really aren't expected to uh, sit at the back of the class quietly and just take notes. Uh, in contrast, what we have are real life challenges that we form into uh, projects and the projects are focused on real life clients. They're drawn from the public sector, the private, nonprofit. Um, and they provide, and your, your, your purpose is to do real life research in order to address whatever challenge um, that client has brought to the table. Um, it emphasizes teamwork, creativity, innovation. There's a focus on the UN SDGs as well as reconciliation, community impact. And it's really uh, hoping to answer that question or explore that idea of how can we address, how can a sustainable business model help address the world's complex problems? So what does this look like in practice? You, the, currently we're, we're focused on years uh, three and four. So students within their undergraduate uh, degree uh, uh, trajectory, um, you're working in small groups, uh, small teams uh, with small cohorts. So it's about 20 students that is what we have traditionally had. You can think of uh, teams of about five. Uh, those teams, the students themselves are very multicultural. They come from a range of uh, countries and you are um, in class for four hours a day, about four days a week. And those classes run from 10 to uh, 3 p.m. So the, the great news here is that there's a lot of time for that project work outside of the, the kind of in-class sessions. Um, and there's also time for paid work outside of that, which is also, it's pretty normal for most of our students to be involved in paid work too. Um, just like a real consultancy job, this is fast paced. Uh, it's, uh, you're looking at uh, uh, working on uh, everything within a six month period and trying to complete within that 16 month period. Um, and it also means that the projects themselves are about four to six weeks long. Again, like I've said, they're drawn from real organizations and, but they're not, they're not case studies. Uh, they are real live problems that are happening right now within those organizations. So you're very much learning by applying yourself and by doing. It's not, not the traditional uh, mode of repeating information or uh, replicating things that the uh, instructor or the prof has talked about. And those deliverables, they really matter to a client because this is real consultancy work. Um, so for, for anyone who is uh, who has ever engaged with Enactus, has been maybe a volunteer with Enactus, or if you're watching this now and you're a student involved in Enactus, you're going to find that there's a lot of similarities between uh, what you have experienced with Enactus and what you would experience at RRU's BBA. So for those of you who've never heard of Enactus, this is a volunteer club that works, works with post-secondary students in communities across Canada, but it's also global. There's a, a global network. And um, what I've got on the screen here is, I believe their uh, vision statement that Enactus Canada ignites the potential of Canada's future uh, leaders to drive positive social, environmental, and economic impact by empowering their entrepreneurial mindset. Now, the reason why I put this up here is because I would love to be able to scoop this and use this for the BBA program. This is very much in line with what we do within BBA. Um, so the main takeaway here is that, you know, you're working on projects that don't have, there's not a right answer. Um, you have to be able to engage with the client or with an activist. You have to be able to engage with the community in order to find solutions to really challenging problems. Um, and uh, and it's, it's, your, it's that process of engagement. It's your ability to actually put those uh, concepts together and to come up with real usable uh, potential solutions and recommendations to the client. That's what you're assessed on. 
So if you liked Enactus as a concept uh, and you, you really had fun as a volunteer there, I think you should give the uh, RRU's BBA uh, a really close look because there's so many similarities. It's just a natural progression from, uh, from the Enactus experience. So here's some um, past projects and clients that uh, we've worked on. Obviously, there are far more. Um, some of the particularly awesome and juicy ones we would love to be able to share with you, but we've actually, because they're so important to the client, we've actually had to engage in uh, non-disclosure agreements with the client. Uh, so again, that talks about just how serious the work is that uh, you would be undertaking. But what we have here is a good selection of uh, projects that cover a range of organization types, everything from uh, public sector to nonprofit to private sector. And these are all real and challenging uh, ch uh, issues that these clients are facing right now. So let's take a look then at a, a kind of a comparison between um, uh, resumes, what you would get from a traditional uh, BBA program, what you would get within the Royal Roads uh, BBA experience. I'm going to use myself here. Uh, so this, if you were to see my resume coming out of undergrad, this is probably the best that I could do in terms of work experience. I was a sales associate at a uh, used CD store. It was a lot of fun. Um, I also delivered bagels. Uh, and for most of our students, the, the, the work-related things that they are doing is kind of similar. You know, they're working in Walmart, they're working in uh, Costco or uh, other retail-based um, organizations. If you're in a regular BBA program, it stops there. Like that's all you, that's what you have in order to showcase uh, work experience to, uh, to your future employers. If you come and participate with the BBA, however, you're able to emphasize all of those other consultancy-based work because it was real work that you did for real clients. Everything from local governments, businesses, nonprofits, um, you're emphasizing real, I don't know, real tangible outcomes and activities and skills that you would, and experiences that you would have had, um, such as cost benefit analysis, economic develop, uh, uh, development opportunities, life cycle analysis. These are all things that I would not have been able to demonstrate um, given my experience coming out of my undergrad. And if you select a regular BBA uh, program in another university, well, you know, what's on the left, it's good. It's, it's fine. It's regular. It's normal. But it doesn't have uh, the same weight as what you would be able to demonstrate to a future employer uh, after coming on the uh, Royal Roads BBA. So I know which one I would want to uh, put in front of an employer. So let's talk about the support for your journey. You're not working alone. There's lots of supports at the uh, Royal Roads campus, everything from help with writing, help with um, just general life. Everyone has life events that happen within their, uh, their undergrad experience. Your health and well-being are really important to us and well-supported. We've got career learning and development, so helping you think about what are next steps after you, uh, after you graduate and leave. Um, we've got a, a range of other student services too. Um, and the last one that I want to really emphasize is just the team coach. We're one of, I believe, two universities in Canada that um, actually have a team coach program. Um, teamwork is so important within, the, within our BBA, within project-based learning. And we know that it's not easy. Um, and we also know that it's something that because it's skill-based, um, it, it, we need someone with a particular knowledge and insights into helping you get the most out of that team experience. And all of this is really a reflection of just how much teamwork is valued by employers. So we put a lot of emphasis on teams and we try and give as much support as possible in order to do that. So I'm now going to pass over to Mel LaSalle. She was a uh, past graduate from the BBA program. And let's hear what she has to say in terms of uh, what her experience was like at BBA and what she has done um, after, the BB, after her uh, graduation. So I'm gonna stop sharing and uh, pass over to you, Mel. Thanks, Lee. 
Um, yeah, to start off, I think echoing Lee touched on a lot of good points that I definitely want to circle back to, but I'll begin kind of at the start of my journey and finding the BBA online. And I just sitting here listening to you, I had this deja vu moment of, I was looking at all the programs I can get into and found a video that promoted this program. And I remember sitting at home watching it and now to be on the other side of that, presenting it to someone that was like me. So excited and honored to have this full circle moment right now. So yeah, I was part of the BBA. I just graduated. There are three completion options for the program, uh, an internship, studying internationally or a capstone project. And I chose the internship, uh, which led me to working here at Barnacle, which was mentioned earlier. And then Barnacle led me to now working here at Babcock, which is all really within the marine industry here on the West Coast. Um, I can go back those who a day in the life in the BBA. So I entered and was excited about the program. Yeah, like Lee mentioned at the beginning, uh, just that different, no textbooks, and actually learning through what you were doing every day. So there absolutely was no textbooks. We were put into teams, and a client was would come in with their concept, idea, problem, and we were given a lot of freedom to be like, this is what we need solved. This is what we're looking into. Um, here's a template of what we'll be learning within that but then you had the freedom to use your own ideas and really take it to whatever level you wanted to, which I definitely enjoyed and appreciated. Um, similar to the resume piece tying in, uh, I had a marketing degree from about 10 years ago and I also did an internship, but still like nothing came of that, but I knew the importance of an internship and how that gets your foot in the door. So working and meeting with all these clients and showing them my work one after another. And I think too, I came from Ontario, had never been out to BC. So I didn't know where I wanted to work. I knew I loved sustainability, but I wasn't sure which avenue that would take me. Was it infrastructure? Was it protecting the oceans? Was it working for hydro? There were so many options. And then the clients give you that opportunity too, to get a look into what you're interested in and where your strengths lie. And then tying all that into your resume, as Lee mentioned, or even my LinkedIn, I went from putting Canada Post as experience and had nothing else to show other than, yeah, saying I completed a BBA like everyone else. But at the same time on my LinkedIn, I can now have like 10 projects, who I worked for, what I did, the teams that I worked with, how I learned working with different people, I can link to everyone I worked with. I can show photos of the projects and I wouldn't have been able to get that anywhere else. And that was huge in not only boosting my confidence when I was left the program and was applying for jobs, but also had so many areas to talk about when I was in interviews, whether it was specific projects or when they say, give me an experience about this. I had so many different things to talk about. Um, so that's definitely an area that I recommend that other programs are not offering. Um, Lee mentioned the the 10 to 3 schedule. That was also amazing. The campus is so beautiful. And it's such a wholesome program in the sense that, yeah, you're a small group. You're in a beautiful setting. And the professors and same with like the team coaches just value your mental health in the program just as much as you're learning. So things like I remember being toured around the forest with an Indigenous elder and that and seeing the value in that from the school and the, the professors, in addition to the course content, just made that wholesome piece of it come together. We had another day where we went to sit in the forest and meditate. And again, it's not your every day, but it really made me feel like this is my spot. This is what I came here for. These are my people. And I got so much out of it, the the respect and stuff that comes with those learning opportunities. And again, when you work with different clients, you're working with some organizations that are already sustainable and have those values. But then we also worked with people that were just interested in entering sustainability. So you're learning to alter your message 
at the same time to not be like, I'm right with my sustainability. You should listen to me. There's so much like behind the scenes learning that you're getting from that, that you may not even realize when you're in it, but now being outside in the industry, I'm definitely appreciating that side of it as well. Um, and then things, yeah, like our field trips, that was amazing. And they're lifelong memories that I now have, like uh, visiting Indigenous communities and having prayer circles with them and going to the landfill, which to some may sound very strange, but it was so exciting. And I've even carried that into my job now where I'm organizing a landfill trip for some of our members here to show the importance of where our waste goes. And uh it's important to see it and then like how that registers in your mind versus just reading it in a textbook when you're always being dumped all these sustainable things and almost falling into the negativity of it all and getting that environmental anxiety. It was a very positive spin on everything and just, yeah, awareness and engagement that lasts with you much longer than that day or, and then again, you're, you're spreading that message, which circling into kind of any, the program and within it the communication that I had with people in the program uh, I very much felt like I was heard in the program uh, if I for example I think back to some of our clients and I had mentioned like oh I would love to explore like infrastructure or like this has caught my eye before I entered the program could we work with a client like this and then sure enough it was lined up it was an amazing client I would never have been able to go into that business and be like, hey, you should think about sustainability. But here they were sitting in front of me, like the top people of the organization, listening to my research and my education and having a face to face discussion with me. So those moments are just very surreal that I had the opportunity to do stuff like that. Um, now where I am, I am yeah, excited to say that I'm now the environmental specialist for all of Babcock Canada. Um, so I fall within the health and safety department here at Babcock, but so there's like a safety person and then there's an environmental person, which is me, and I represent all of Canada from coast to coast. So what we do here is they uh, are engineers contracted out to help build the submarines for the military. Then we do aviation work uh, in Manitoba too for fire rescue and stuff. We're also having a contract with helicopter search and rescue in BC. Uh, we have offices in Ottawa. On the East Coast, we do more uh, marine stuff. So when I started, I got really thrown into it. The head office is in the UK, so I get orders from the UK of what I control in Canada. And when I first started in January, they said, we want all our emissions calculated uh, for all of 2023. <laughs> so that's where I started. And again, it, it's, it was very daunting to come out of a student and being like, here's our entire Canadian company, please calculate all our emissions. But it was also like, okay, I learned this. I know what they're talking about. Um, so it really gave me that confidence and the teamwork mentality that I've also taken from the program where it's like, even though I'm the only person in the environment department, I have my manager, I have the UK to help me out. And I've really embraced just like sending them emails, sending them messages, arranging meetings by being like, hey guys, remember I'm over here alone in Canada, like I need some help. And almost taking out like everyone's position and just being like, we're just a team. We all work for the same company. Like the environment and helping the environment right now is new to many people and we're figuring it out as we go along, which I also learned from the program where I came in thinking I would just save the world by myself. And that's not the case. Like just starting the conversation is huge and the program allows me to do that this job allows me to do that and then the confidence that the program gave me to do that um so yeah I definitely if my resume didn't look the way it did if I never worked at Barnacle I would not be here because the connection Barnacle had as a local business with this business here also being established on Vancouver Island really helped me solidify this position so absolutely yeah thankful for the program and the journey that it led me here from start to finish of like how it accepted me in as a mature student with a diverse background, uh, complimented my passion, supported me, teammates, professors, and yeah. So awesome. thank you, BBA, and definitely recommend the program. 
Wow. Hey, thanks a lot. And congratulations on that, uh, that job. <laughs> I mean, if someone walked up to me and said, uh, go calculate all our greenhouse gas emissions. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But I mean, I remember projects where, you know, your instructors were asking you to do very similar work. Um, life cycle analysis, uh, emissions analysis, uh, all, all kinds of really very technical stuff. And it's great to hear that you've been able to directly uh, apply that within your work. So thanks very much, Mel. Um, we are going to handle um, any questions that we have. We've got some set questions that, we, that regularly uh, come up. And uh, the first one, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to perhaps maybe just read out the questions at the moment right now, if, and I invite our program staff to uh, jump in with answers, um, if and when. Um, I know Mel's already uh, talked about the completion options, but um, just to reiterate, there are, uh, at the end of the program, you have a, uh, you have a chance to decide whether you are going to do uh, an internship, whether you are going to go and do a study abroad, um, or whether you are going to uh, focus on a particular research uh, element that you are interested in and, and work on that independently. Um, so those uh, completion options are um, very flexible for a lot of different student types, give you a chance to uh, get your foot in the door with uh, organizations, as Mel said, um, but also, if you've never had a chance to study abroad, it gives you that option to, um, uh, to, to do that too. So uh, I do have a question here that says, what are the costs? Because of course, uh, people are always interested in what the costs are. Perhaps I'm just going to share my screen again so that uh, we can use the links that are on there. Because the best way to keep up with, um, with those uh, costs is to uh, to check out our website. Of course, we don't know when you are watching this recording. Uh, numbers change, um, so the uh, going to this pro uh, program page is that correct, folks? If we go there, okay. I'm just going to click on that for a second. Uh, so this is what the BBA uh, landing page looks like. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to jump in with um, some other further guidance on tuition and costs. Um, you can see it just says uh, visit the tuition fees page um, under the different intakes. Yep. Um, and if you follow that link, um, it will uh, show you the tuition fees for each of the programs. Great. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Um, and like I said, the, the numbers change on a regular basis, so um, it's best to go and check that out uh, for yourself. Um, we've also got uh, a question about enrollment and how do you enroll. And again, I think the, uh, the best um, advice here is to uh, contact the enrollment advisors because you may be coming uh, into the program um, as a Canadian student, you may be coming in as an international student. There's obviously different processes that need to uh, need to be engaged with in either. Would anyone like to jump in and talk a little bit about uh, enrollment? We do also have flexible admission, just so people are aware of that. Mel mentioned it, um, but it's a way of assessing people who maybe don't have the formal two-year college background um, that would be the normal entry requirement. So, you know, whatever your background, please don't think that you can't apply. Um, contact the enrollment advisors and they'll walk you through the process. Yeah. And that, because that is a question that we uh, get, you know, I don't necessarily have um, uh, undergrad, uh, my two years undergrad degree, can I still come into the program? Um, so I'll just click on that to show you what that landing page looks like. Um, again, this is information that does get, um, especially the process, maybe not the process, but especially for international uh, students, the requirements that are needed for uh, enrollment and the, and, and the paperwork. This, these are things that change on a, a regular basis. So the best thing to do is to uh, either contact us and we'll uh, let you know where you should look on the Royal Roads website or uh, access either of those links that are built into the, um, into the uh, PowerPoint presentation itself. So I think those are the main questions that we're oftentimes um, uh, asked to answer. 
Uh, obviously, you may have questions and issues and challenges that are particular to uh, to yourself. Um, we do encourage you to reach out with uh, those questions. There's no bad questions. Uh, we do really want you on the program. Uh, we think we have a lot to offer and a lot to share. Uh, and uh, I think that's pretty much it for uh, the webinar. Uh, thank you very much for uh, watching this recording. And I hope you give uh, the BBA's um, or the RRU's BBA program uh, a serious look and a serious consideration and reach out if you have any questions about anything. Okay, I think that is it for now. Thank you.